Hello, it's Scott Manley here with, uh, well, this is my slot from KerbalCon, and my KerbalCon slot is Impossible Things. So then, starting out with a challenge where I set myself the task of building an aircraft, but only being able to use each part once, and also being required to use every uh, aerodynamic surface that the game gives me. So, uh... I couldn't just build the smallest aircraft possible. I had to actually build, use everything. The only I didn't need to use every single intake. I didn't need to use all the nose cones, but I did need to use all those flaps and uh, all those control surfaces all, and all those wings. Of course, since you're only allowed to use one of each, you have to build an asymmetric gizmo here. Uh, asymmetric mess, basically. It took me a couple of times tries to get it right to make it as flyable as I would like because uh, what you're trying to do, of course, is standard aerodynamics. You're trying to put the center of mass just in front of the center of lift. So you adjust things to try to keep the center of lift aligned with the rest of the aircraft. Uh, I made some adjustments to the undercarriage as well using, of course, uh, box struts to uh, you know, catch the wingtips just in case we ended up dipping. But there we have one nose wheel, a couple of wingtips, shifting the wings back just a little to make the center of lift go back a bit further. And now is the time to fly it. The moment of truth. So what I'm doing uh, is I cut off fuel consumption from that front tank and that will tend to keep my nose heavy instead of burning the fuel out from underneath it. A little bit of a yaw as I s throttle up the engine, but easily into the air, you see? No problem. And it flies actually relatively well. It's a bit like the Aeris 3, uh, which actually has a tendency to flip up if you turn too fast, like that. Uh, of course, that is all feigned excitement because I recorded this ages ago. <laughs> I know, it was just me mucking around. I had not intended to record a voiceover at this time. But uh, yeah, it flies pretty well. And yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll dig out the part model and make this available because it's kind of silly. Let's do some nice fly pasts around the, around the, fl the space center. Now, this is of course, because this was KerbalCon, I had a mind to where Kerbal might be going. So I kind of put this out there uh, to say, hey, you know, Maybe at some point you guys will uh, work on the aerodynamics. And it's not more, not so much a request as a, hey, we, in the future we expect to see more awesomer aerodynamics. If you try building this particular one with ferrum, it won't fly. However, it is actually possible to build an asymmetric aircraft with ferrum aerospace. It's just uh, a lot harder. The main thing is with ferrum aerospace is it models things like delta wings slightly better. So delta wings as the angle of attack oh yes that was a cool one as the angle of attack increases their lift characteristics fall off differently from uh, straight wings so as you would it would fly straight but as soon as you tried to turn you would find one wing kind of pitching down but uh coming in for landing it's uh quite it glides pretty well because it doesn't have a huge amount of mass because i had to stick every single wing i could find on it right i guess if i uh had built a larger aircraft then I might have trouble. Maybe I should go back and try to fit on all the other nose cones and uh, air intakes and things like that just to make, you know, just to fill out the aerodynamics menu. There we go. Touchdown. Of course, we only have brakes in the front wheel, which I will turn on at some point or past me will turn on at some point. No, no, apparently he does not want to turn on those uh, wheel. There we go. Wheel brakes. There. Excellent flight. Marvelous construction, a marvel of aerodynamic engineering that uh, NASA engineers would be proud of, no doubt. And of course we come to my little blurb, that you would be better flying the box it came in. I heard a shuttle pilot say that once. And so it came to me that because of um, limits of the aerodynamic system, you could actually fly the box that it comes in. Although technically this is just a box, but you could make a box that was big enough to put that in and stick, you know, an engine on it, uh, some control surfaces inside it, but to all intents and purposes, this is a box. You can see the pilot in there sitting inside his Mark II cockpit. Mark II cockpit, of course, has no interior, which uh, is fine because all he would be seeing is the inside of a box. It actually flies pretty well. Surprisingly well. It, um, 
it does have a lot of inertia during turning, but it turns like it's on rails. It just, you know, the nose wants to dip continuously. It really will just point, go where you point it, more or less. You're going to buzz the, the launch pad or something. All the debris on it. Whoa, yes, get up over the runway. Turn around. and uh, Yeah, this is where I actually crash it. because, And I left this crash in because it looked pretty cool. Watch, watch, the crash is coming, the crash is coming. Oh dear. Yes, top flies away and collides with the, space, the vehicle assembly building, huh? Because we don't like those people in the vehicle assembly building. They build rockets. They don't have any time for us with our aerodynamics, huh? Oh yes. Anyway, uh, yeah, it is flyable. We can bring it around and I'll demonstrate that we can, in fact, land this thing. Yeah, the the session was, was more or less supposed to be me and Abyssal Lurker because I thought that most people... You know, he doesn't have enough people watching him. He's awesome. His videos are incredibly inventive. And uh, they do things which um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily believe are possible. Or if I believe they're possible, they're just too hard for me to bother doing. He uh, really goes out and does it and... You know, I, I have so much respect for that dude, and I was really happy that he came on and uh, tolerated my uh, inept, you know, ramblings and whatever else. Um, it was just unfortunate that, you know, we couldn't tell what the sound levels were, and I could see people in the channel saying, oh, the, the sound is too loud, and we couldn't hear Abyssal Lurker. And I was telling Max Maps that, and then Max was like, oh, great, um, he couldn't, he couldn't change the volume of the video without restarting the video because apparently Open Broadcaster has issues. So, uh, yeah, just slowing down here, I'm doing some turning left, right, left, right. Um, yeah, I mean, there was some problems with the Kerbal Con experience, but uh, hey, they'll probably get better at it next year. I don't know how long they'll be developing this game for. It'll be, uh, it's, I, could, I could easily see another year of development at the rate they're going, but... Uh, I hope it continues selling for that amount of time. I mean, it's nice to see that Minecraft continues to sell. I heard that Minecraft has passed 40 million copies, which is quite amazing. You know, it is... Uh, wow, it's an iconic game. And if, if Kerbal could go that way, that would just be amazing. I, I don't think Minecraft is creating a bunch of... Well... Okay, let's come to the other thing. Yes, I'm forgetting my script. So, you can fly the box, but can you fly the box from inside the box, from IVA view? That was my challenge. I was like, look, you can't see anything. There's no IVA, which, hey, devs would be really nice to have an IVA view on the Mark II cockpit. But as it happens, we don't have one. And even if we did, we would just see the interior of the box. So I said, can I fly this, fly it around in a circle and land it? Well, I came up with a way to do it. It requires flying some rockets first. So what we're going to do here, a little, uh, you know, solid rocket booster, some uh, separatron or separators, little uh, boxes on the side with parachutes, and that's it, and some space probes, I guess, underneath. And we'll call this one West. We head out to the west of the space center. And once we get far enough away and high enough, we ditch all those, and they arc out beautifully, expanding to fill the sky, blooming out like a flower made of space debris, coming back to the surface, and leaving uh, a nice little marker on the surface. You can guess where this is going now if you look carefully. So we have a few of these on the surface. Let's set in a bunch north of the, a of the space center. Go a little higher this time, but I realized that I made the mistake of uh, detaching those before I was at the top of my arc. Head east, again, pull upwards into a, an ascent, and ditch those so that they uh, leave a, a trail, let's say. And, 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 I guess these are going to, are they going to go all the way down? Here we go. And this one, these are going to go south. Now, the real way to do this is to go into a vertical climb and don't detach them until you're about to hit the, hit the top of your arc. Then the parachutes will tend to, uh, they'll tend to spread further. And this one is just going to go straight up. 
because it's going straight up it goes higher and faster of course spin it up and when I hit the top of my arc when that needle flips over ditch these out and yeah you know this time we get a uh, them spread out over 300 meters and these things will actually come down all over the space center and of course the trick is all those markers showing me the vehicle locations well those will actually be visible through the IVA view here we are inside the cockpit we just need to we can't see anything but we need our heads up display let's turn it on pressing F4 bang now the trick is to try and take off fly around in a circle without hitting anything especially the ground but yeah also take off the brakes and uh, once we have once we've flown around in a circle we want to land back on the runway or at least as close to the runway as I can manage and uh, I suspect I will not hit the runway actually I know I will not hit the runway but you will be amazed how close I come there look at that you can see the launch pad with all the debris around it from my various experiments there is the south cluster that uh, I set up and uh, by looking a uh, curve around you see I start to turn over too much that is the west cluster there so I'm gonna fly towards that and uh, I don't quite know where but uh, yeah I'm heading straight towards that I, I don't know what pitch to take so I kind of erred on the side of safety and pitched up a little rather than uh, nose diving into the ground and hitting it because that would be rather unfortunate. I don't think I raised my gear because I wasn't sure whether the gear was deployed or not. I don't have that information. Now, I do have a timer. That's one thing you do have in this mode. And you do have um, your roll and pitch indicators. So it's turning around and now I'm looking for the runway. So I can see one that says Orion space or Orion plane one ship that was a uh, my kid Orion built one and uh, crashed it almost instantly I think it just exploded in the launch on the it, on the runway instantly so uh, that makes a good marker for roughly where the runway is we can see the west the, the east cluster there and now I'm just gliding cut the engine power and hoping that I know where I'm actually going so just kind of level myself out over where I think the runway is. I can also see the um, see these probes here, right? Oh, yeah, so I want to keep, I want to be between these. I want to head towards the cluster that's off to the west, off to the east, and oh, that must be the ground. Hello, ground. I don't know where you are, but I'm guessing that you're there. Oh, oh pitching forward just a little, watch the brakes. I want to slow down and make sure that I come to a stop. And I think that is a stop. Brilliant. There we go. Landed more or less right next to the runway. Okay, it wasn't right on the runway, but it was close enough. Close enough for me, especially since I couldn't see it. And I ran. I landed within the length of the runway too. Yeah, there's the box. There's a previous attempt there. Let's... Uh, take it up for a victory flight. Oh, I like the way he's ho holding his hand up as if he's knocking the window. Hello, is there anybody out there watching? Well, anyway, we will head back into the skies for one last pass. Uh, now, in, if you're wondering, the reason why this works as a box is because aerodynamics are only modeled on the wing surfaces. Those at uh, the front and the rear of the box are using structural panels, which have no aerodynamic properties other than drag. So uh, by having them side on, you don't get any weird, you know, aerodynamic forces that are associated with it. If you try this in Ferrum, it will probably not fly. I'm sure you could build a very long, thin, flat box and it might just fly in Ferrum, but uh, um, this one plane doesn't work. And I'm guessing also Ferrum might notice that the wings, the control surfaces inside are in the box and therefore unable to provide any traction against the wind. Also, I'm sure a few of you will point out that there are uh, IVA replacements for the Mark II cockpit. In fact, I'm going to use one in my next episode of Kerbal Space Program Interstellar. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.